Hello, my name is Mary Roddy. I'm a radiologist from Charing Cross Hospital London and a member of the UK OSIRIX user group. And today I want to talk to you about how to create anatomy teaching sets for junior radiologists using OSIRIX. So if I open Map OSIRIX, you'll see that the databases I've got on display here are one that contains anatomy tests and another that contains anatomy tests with answers. So let's look at the tests themselves. Here's quiz case one, which is a CT of the thorax, and you can see that it contains several questions, each containing a single arrowed structure, which the candidate has to identify. Now the candidates, when they look at these images, uh, can look at them individually, or they can look at them side by side with the original uh, data uh, and this may help them to be able to identify a structure a little bit more easily. They can look at them in the axial plane or the uh, coronal plane or even the sagittal plane if they wish and of course they can change the windows if they need to. So those are the question sets. If we look at the answer sets, these can be used either by the candidates when they want to go through the answers on their own, or possibly in a group tutorial scenario where they are being uh, taught by a consultant radiologist. And these sets, as well as containing the original images with the arrowed structures, will also contain an answer sheet. So if we look at case one that we were looking at just a moment ago. Uh, this can be looked at in conjunction with the answer sheet, which will uh, demonstrate what all the different arrows are. So here's, for example, question seven, which is the left brachiocephalic vein. Now, the other advantage you have with the SARX is as well as adding in the answer sheet, the other thing that can be added is a PDF of a PowerPoint presentation, which may contain a little bit more information about the anatomy that is being tested uh, in that region. For example, here, a PowerPoint on mediastinal anatomy. So how do we go about uh, creating such data sets? Well, it's very easy. Um, what I would generally start by is looking at my current test sets and I can see that the last one was case 006 so the next case if I'm creating a new one will be case 007. So I will start off by loading a normal anonymized case into my local default database and I think for the purposes of illustration here we'll use this normal chest radiograph. Now the first thing to do is to give it an anatomy quiz case number and I find the easiest way to do this is to go into the anonymization tool. This is a preset for our department that will get rid of all of the patient identifiers in case any have been left on the metadata related to the case and also allow me to change the case number. So here I'm going to change this to anatomy quiz case seven. And I will do that um, in all of the fields, patient ID, patient name, and study instance UID. And the reason that I do that is so that all the images from this case will uh, be exhibited in one row of my database rather than over several rows. And when I've changed those names, I'm just going to uh, press add, which is going to add this case. So this is now a duplicate case of my original one. Um, I might call it chest x-ray just for my own information when I'm teaching. And I'm now ready with a case to be prepared, ready to put um, teaching arrows uh, onto it. So the first thing I'll do is I'll open up the chest radiograph and within OSIRIX, if you look in the top menu, you'll find the ROI screen will give you a list of menu options, including the option to arrow uh, a 
structure on the image. So if I decide to maybe arrow the aortic arch, I make an arrow and I point it at the aortic arch and I've got a point where I can change, if I want to, the colour or the thickness of the arrow. If I go into the ROI uh, menu bar and look at ROI information, I now have the option, if I want to, to change the colour of the arrow or the thickness or the opacity of the arrow. In this case, I think I'll keep it white, but I could also, if I wanted to, put a, a name on that, if I wanted to call that A or 1, um, I could do that, but um, I won't do that in this case. So I've now got an arrow on my image. Uh, I now want to, as we normally do in the SciX, to uh, preserve something that we've done to an image. We need to um, export it as a new DICOM file. Now you'll see that if I take the graphics off, I'm going to lose the arrow, so I'm going to keep that on. And now I'm going to export the image. And I want to export it as the image only. I'm going to keep it with its regions of interest on because I want to keep the arrow there. And in this case, I will call this one question one and I'll press OK. And now if you look at my list of questions, I've now got something called question one, which has an arrow pointing to the aortic arch. You'll see that if I look back at the original image, I have still got my arrow there, so I would probably want to take that off. Alternatively, if I want to arrow another structure, then I can just move it round, and what I'll do now is I'll label maybe the right pulmonary artery. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to call this question two and I'm going to export it. This time I'll call it question two and I will go OK. And now I have a separate question two. And if I go back to my original image, let's point this now maybe at the paratracheal stripe. And for some time, some structures, it's actually quite useful to have more than one arrow. So I might, on this one, point two arrows at the paratracheal stripe. And I'm now going to export this as question three. So if I now look back at my database, I have now got the original image and then I've got question one, question two, and question three, but they're not quite in the order that I would like them to be in. So in order to get the images to show up in a logical order to the candidate, what we need to do is to alter the series number. So to do that, we need to go into the metadata and we have to switch on editing we'll get a warning message the first time we put that on. And what I want to do now is to go down to the part of this that gives me the series number. And if I want this to be the first image in the series, which I do because this is question one, I make sure that series is selected up here. I double click this and change it to 001. It's important not just to write the letter one. You must have a couple of zeros in front of it. And once I've gone onto a new line and that's turned red, I apply it and you'll see now that question one has gone to the beginning of my series. Now if I go to question two, I do exactly the same thing. I press the edit button. I go down to the area where I can see the series number and I change that to 002 and apply. And similarly with question three. Edit, series number 003, and apply. So I'm now 
got my questions in order for the candidate. I've got the original image with no annotations on, and I can add as many more images as I like. And there is my um, question created. Now, I can then move this uh, case into my anatomy test folder. And now when I look at that, I have a new question which is based on this chest x-ray. Now when I want to uh, put the answer sheet in, um, I'm going to first of all move this question into my anatomy test answers. And again, what I'm going to do here is change the name of this case to Answers Anatomy Quiz 007. So I can do that here. copy that and paste it into the other fields. And then I can add that. And there's my uh, answers. I'll just delete that first one there. And what I want to do now is to add an answer sheet to this. So what you need to have is a Word document, uh, a pro forma prepared, and I can call this now case 007, and I'll go aortic arch. fill in everything else as I need to. Um, I've only done three questions here, so I'll show you what I would do now. I would now save that as uh, a PDF. And I'll just call it Answers 007. And if I save that on the desktop, and go back to Asirx, I can then use the plugin and choose PDF to DICOM plugin, go to my desktop and get the answers to 007, press open, and there are my answers on this case. So what I've shown you today is how you can use Osirix to put arrows onto images and create interesting sets of questions that students can look at on their own um, and then look at the answers either on their own with the answer sheet or as part of a group tutorial. I hope you found that useful. Thank you.